Hey everyone, this video is about the HP 21S that was released in 1989 and it was a unique and unusual calculator from HP's Pioneer series. And I have videos featuring uh, many of the 11 Pioneer calculators that were released throughout the 1980s. They're all built using the same modular hardware platform and could be broadly categorized based on whether they were a business or scientific model. Uh, whether they supported algebraic or RPN entry, and lastly, whether they were entry level, mid tier, or advanced. And the 21S, as well as its sister calculator, the 20S, were the two entry level algebraic scientific calculators in the series. And their overall operation was quite similar. The 20S supported a broad set of scientific operations, including base and unit conversions, uh, whereas the 21S was more niche, uh, focused in particular on probability and statistics. Uh, but because I have a separate video on the 20S, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the shared functionality. Instead, I'll mostly focus on the features that were unique to the 21S. Physically, the 21S obviously shares a lot in common with the rest of the Pioneer series. There's a stats and math label above the display, which was unique. All the other scientific calculators in the series had either a scientific or RPN scientific labels on them. And this diagram of the upper tail of a normal distribution curve highlights one of its unique features. The 21S has the same 12-digit 7-segment LCD display as the 20S, and this was the simplest of the three Pioneer display modules, but you can see that it's highly readable in comparison to, say, the dot matrix displays on the 22S or 42S. Of course, it also shares the same excellent Pioneer keyboard as the other models, and it has the classic blue and orange shift keys. You might also notice that there are some alpha keys A through F. These were used for program labels and also to load built-in programs. And like the other algebraic models, the 21S has a large input button instead of uh, enter. And I'll talk later about what this does. The keyboard also features a recessed on-off switch. It's fairly difficult to take Pioneer calculators apart, so I'm not going to do that today. If you're interested, Logan West has a great video on this and that I'll include in the show description. But the 21S uses the lower end BERT version of the Saturn processor and it only has 256 bytes of RAM, which is obviously very constrained. There's no IR port for printing like some higher end pioneers and also no memory editor. On the back you can see the usual battery port for three LR44s and there are five feet uh, to stop the calculator slipping on a desk. And this particular 21S was made in Singapore. So the basic operation of the 21S is very simple. It supports register style arithmetic where only a single number is displayed at a time. And of course regular functions are entered postfix style. And earlier I mentioned the input key. This is used to separate inputs for some functions that take two arguments, and it's also used by functions that return two results. So let's do a rectangular to polar coordinate conversion. So say we have a rectangular coordinate x equals 3, y equals 4. We enter the y component first, and then hit input. And now let's hit the two polar key. And we can see our angle in degrees. And you'll notice that there's a colon character display that indicates there's a second number in the Y register. So let's hit the swap key to swap uh, Y and X and see our magnitude. And interestingly, you can also use the swap key to swap two operands in an equation. So if we enter 2 divided by 3, we can enter swap before we hit equals, and 3 over 2 will be calculated. So let's move on to some more unique functions of the 21S. And so the 21S has functions to calculate the upper tail probability and inverse probability for four continuous probability distributions. And the way these work is fairly straightforward. 
Let's use an example from the normal distribution. So say we wanted to find the probability a random normal variable z is above one standard deviation above the mean. So to do this we simply enter 1 and hit q of z. So that's around 15.86%. And this makes sense because if we double that that's the chance the number is outside one standard deviation. So if we subtract that from 100%, we get 68.27, which you might know is the percentage chance a random normal variable is within one standard deviation of the mean. And the 21S supports the inverse function too. So say we wanted to know where the 99th percentile lies in a normal distribution. Well, the area above that amount would be 1%. So let's enter 0 0.01 and hit the Z of Z of P button. And so the 99th percentile lies around 2.2%. 3 to 6 standard deviations above the mean. And the 21S supports the same operations for three other continuous distributions. There's the student's T distribution, which is useful when you only have a relatively small sample set from normally distributed data, and therefore there's uncertainty around the mean and standard deviation. The second is the chi-squared distribution, which is often used to tell whether two variables are correlated with each other. A lower value means a higher correlation. And then there's also the F distribution, which is often used to understand whether the differences between two sample distributions are statistically significant. And the functions for these distributions work the same way as the previous example, but with the exception that we need to configure one or two degrees of freedom. So for example, with the student's T distribution, we must configure a single degree of freedom, and this is set to the number of our data samples minus one. So say we had only 15 samples, uh, then we would store 14 into register one. And so let's find our probability again that a random variable will be above one standard deviation from the mean, but this time using the Q of T function. And it's 16.71%, which is slightly higher than the 15.86 we calculated for the normal distribution. And this is because of the inherent uncertainty around our mean and standard deviation when you only have 15 samples of data. But let's say we had 200 samples and we did our calculation again. Well now the probability for the student's t distribution starts to converge with the normal one. Of course the 21s has the usual statistical functions uh, where you can enter data and access the total mean and standard deviation. So let's enter three numbers, a one, one, two, and three and uh, the mean is obviously 2, and the standard deviation is 1. But of course, the 21S has only 10 data registers, and it's not storing the actual individual data points I entered, it's just storing aggregate values. So register 1 is the number of data points, register 2 is the sum of the x values, and register 7 is the sum of the squares. And like many low memory calculators, the 21S is using Welford's method to calculate the mean and standard deviation from this aggregate data. But if the standard deviation is small compared to the mean, Welford's method breaks down because of lack of calculation precision. And to see this problem, let's clear our data series and we'll add a million to each of our data points to make them larger. And now the mean is one million and two, uh, but if we ask for the standard deviation, it reports an error. And this problem is by no means restricted to the 21S. Uh, the 42S has 
the same issue. And out of the Pioneer series, only the 17B, uh, the 17B2 and the 27S that actually store the data points entered uh, immune. And if you want to learn more about Welford's method and its issues, I'll include a link in the show description. And the 21S supports six program libraries that can be loaded from ROM into program space. So for example, to load the binomial probability library, we can enter program space and then hit the load key and then select E. And then we exit out of program space. And so now to say to calculate the probability of throwing uh, two dice and rolling two sixes, uh, we store our individual trial probability uh, one over six in uh, storage register two, and we enter our number of trials into storage register one. And now if we execute uh, label A, uh, we get 2.77%. And I guess the routines in the program library are quite useful, uh, but they're not uh, that easy to use, and they do wipe out any previously defined programs that you might have. So in summary, the 21S was an interesting pioneer model. It was the only keystroke programmable calculator I know of to support its probability distribution functions, but its lack of memory was very limiting, both because of the lack of space for programs, but also because it meant it couldn't actually store data for analysis. And by 1989, more expensive RPL calculators like the 28S were on the market that could do all these things and more. So obviously, this made the 21S quite niche, and it was sold in relatively low volumes, which makes it one of the rarer Pioneer models now. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.